videotape me just leaving the phone. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to check all your lights, reflectors, and reflective tape. Okay, all my lights to the front and side uh, are amber in color, all my lights to the rear are red in color. They're not cracked, non broken, no pieces missing. I have my clearance lights on top of the cab. I have left and right turn signals on the front, four way flashes in the front, and marker lights in the front. And I have them also on the fenders. My headlights are clean and clear. I got high and low beam. Okay, let's go ahead and unopen the hood here. Okay, let's start over here on the driver's side. Okay, so we're going to check our hoses and our hose clamps and fittings. Make sure none of our hoses uh, to the brake chambers or to the steering gearbox or uh, any other hoses on the engine itself. Uh, all the clamps are tight and the fittings are tight, not leaking fluid or air. None of the hoses are cut or split, leaking fluid or air out of them. We check our oil here between add and full. We have to add oil, we'll add it here. Okay, our air compressor right there. It's gear driven, it's bolted to the engine, none of the bolts are loose or missing, and it's not damaged or leaking any air out of it. Our power steering pump, right back here behind it, okay, it's not damaged, leaking any fluid out of it. It's gear driven and it's also bolted tightly to the engine, none of those bolts are loose or missing either. Power steering uh, reservoir, or fluid reservoir, it's a two piece, so there's a clamp in place here, the clamp is tight, it's not leaking fluid have a cap in place. It is bolted to this bracket, which is bolted to the frame, and the nuts and bolts are tight. Our steering arm, we can rotate it, but not move it back and forth. The U-joint here, and the U-joint there. There's no shiny metal shavings at either U-joint. Our steering gearbox, it's not damaged or leaking any fluid from it. It is bolted also tightly to the frame, none of the nuts or bolts are loose or missing. Our steering linkage here, uh, we have four castle nuts, three on this side, one on the other. Each castle nut is tight and held in place with a cotter pin to keep them from loosening up. And the uh, each joint we have a rubber grease bushing in there and it's not missing or coming out. In the front right here and in the back of the spring, we have spring hangers. Spring hangers are both bolted tightly to the frame. None of the bolts are loose or missing. Neither spring hanger is cracked or broken. There's no welds on it. Our spring, uh, it's in line. It's not scissoring. There's no signs of movement there. It's not cracked or broken. It's held to the axle with two U-bolts. The nuts on the bottom of the U-bolts are tight. Like I said, there's no signs of movement there. Shock absorber, bolted top and bottom. It is not damaged or leaking fluid. Our brake chamber, not damaged, not leaking any air. It is bolted to this bracket. The nuts and bolts are present and tight. The push rod coming out of the back of the, of the uh, brake chamber is connected to the slack adjuster with the pin and a cotter pin. And with the brakes released, you cannot move it more than one inch. Our brake drum and linings, the brake drum itself, there's no deep grooves in it. Not cracked or broken. The brake linings are not dangerously thin. And there's pieces, no pieces missing from them, and there's no contaminants such as grease or oil on them. The tire, sidewalls, there's no bubble drips or tears. The tread is wearing evenly, minimum 4 30 seconds tread depth, and there's no nails or screws in our tread. Our rim, our rim is not cracked, not broken, it's not dented or bent anywhere. Uh, Lug nuts are all in place. They're, they're all tight. There's no rust trails coming off them that might indicate a loose lug nut. The hub oil seal. The bolts are all present and tight on the oil seal. It's not leaking any fluid. If you have to add any, we'll just take this cap out and pour some in there. Our valve stem right here is straight. has a cap in place. And we will check inflation with a tire gauge. Okay. Got that? Let's go to the other side. Okay, you have some stuff over here.
over here. Okay, we have our coolant reservoir. It's full, has a cap in place, it's not leaking, and is mounted to the front of the truck, and or bolted to the front of the truck, and it's not loose. The hose, we follow the hose down here, which it takes us down to the water pump. Water pump is not leaking any fluid out of it. It is bolted to the engine tightly. None of the bolts are loose or missing. It is belt driven. Alternator right here. This has four bolts in it holding it to the engine. They're not loose or missing. The bolts that are holding our electrical leads in place are tight and there's no signs of arcing here. It's also belt driven. The serpentine belt, there's no measurable deflection on our serpentine belt. There's no chunks missing out of it. It's not threading out or dry rot or decayed or anything like that. And that takes care of this side, okay? All right. You can also tell them that you would inspect the suspension on this side as you've done the other. Okay. We'll shut the hood down. Hood's coming down. Make sure everybody's in clear. Okay, now we're going to do the tractor. Starts right here at the mirror. Mirror is bolted to the cab tightly, it's not loose. The glass is not cracked or broken, and there's no pieces missing from it. Our door, the side glass is clean and clear, not cracked or broken. The latch works properly, it, it closes and unlatches easily. The hinges are bolted to the cab and to the door. Uh, the hinge pins are in place and they are not worn, which allows it to swing freely. Uh, steps right here, they're bolted to the cab. There's no gravel uh, or debris or ice on these that can cause you to trip and fall. We go back here to our fuel tank. Fuel tank is not dented or ruptured. It has two straps on it. The straps that go around the tank, they are bolted to the frame tightly. The straps have a rubber gasket between the straps and the tank, keep metal from rubbing on metal. Our fuel lines up here, the clamps are tight, not leaking fuel. The lines are not cut or split or leaking any fuel out of them. The cap is in place with a rubber seal underneath of the cap. We'll come inside here. Come inside here, we have our drive shaft. Drive shaft is not bent or twisted. It is connected to the axle and the back of the transmission on each end with U-bolts around the U-joints and they are tight. Our exhaust right there, it is bolted to the bracket and bolted to the frame. Uh, the bolts are tight, it's not loose. And where the clamps are uh, at the joints on the exhaust, there is no soot trails. The frame is not bent or twisted, not cracked, no illegal wells on our frame. Torque arm in here, the torque arm uh, is straight, it's not bent, and where the pin goes through each end, there is a rubber bushing in there, and you'll make sure that rubber bushing is not missing or coming out. Our spring hanger, or spring mount, however you want to call it, it's bolted to the frame, uh, it's not cracked or broken, no welds on it, and all the bolts are present and tight on it. The spring is in line, it's running across the axle. It's held to the axle with uh, two U-bolts and the nuts on the bottom of the U-bolts are tight and there's no signs of movement in there. Our brake chamber right here. The hose is going to the brake chamber. The fittings are tight on both ends. The hose is not cut or split or leaking any air. Brake chamber itself is not uh, damaged or leaking any air. It's two piece and there's a clamp holding two pieces together and the clamp is tight. It is bolted to that bracket with nuts and bolts and they are uh, tight, not loose or missing. There's a push rod and a slack adjuster also coming out the back of that brake chamber. The push rod is straight. It's connected to the slack adjuster with a pin and a cotter pin. Again, with the brakes released, you cannot move it more than one inch. We'll come out to our brake drum again. The brake drum is not cracked or broken, no pieces missing, no deep grooves in it. The brake linings are not dangerously thin and there's no contaminants such as grease or oil on them. Tire, sidewalls, uh, same as the front, uh, no bubble zipped or tears on the sidewalls. It's wearing evenly, minimum 230 seconds tread depth. Rim is not cracked, bent, or broken. 
no illegal welds on it lug nuts are all in place and tight there's no rust shows coming off of any of our lug nuts to indicate a loose lug nut our axle seal all the nuts are tight on the bolts on it and it's not leaking any fluid out of it our valve stem up here uh, has a cap in place that's straight and check inflation with a tire gauge right behind it back there we have a shock absorber bolted top and bottom not damaged or leaky fluid and right behind that uh, bolted to the uh, spring and to the frame is our airbag like this bolted top and bottom not cut not punctured or leaking any air out of it if we come on back here to the back and we would also inspect the others as we've done that one come back to the back we have our mud flap have DOT tape on the back of the mud flap it's not ripped or torn or dragging the ground all the bolts that are holding the mud flap to the bracket are present and tight. Our lights back here, we have brake lights, marker lights, four-way flashers, and left and right turn signal. Okay. You got that? Yep. I'm sure you do. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got it. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the coupling system next. Means how we're right here before I do the trailer. Okay. So on our coupling system, I'm going to start here at the back of the tractor with our hoses. The fittings are tight. So they're not leaking any air. My hoses, if I follow them around, they're not cut or split or leaking any air. The fittings at the glad hands are tight and not leaking any air on either end here. We have a rubber seal in place. You don't have to take it apart and show them. Just tell them, point to it and tell them there's a rubber seal in place. For our electrical line, it's the same. Uh, we're gonna make sure that the safety clip is over each end, it's plugged in fully, and there's no signs of arcing uh, at either plug-in. The line is no bare wire showing, there's no burn marks, and there's no spliced wires in there. Okay? Okay. So we're gonna come down here to our apron. Our apron up top here, I have a factory weld around the outside of our apron here, plus these bolts are holding our apron in. Our apron is flat. There's no spots on there where it's rusting through anywhere. Between the apron and the, the fifth wheel skid plate right here, there's no gap there. It is greased properly. The skid plate uh, has no cracks or breaks in it, no illegal welds on it. There's two swivel pins, one on this side, one on the other. The swivel pin is held in place with that nut and bolt. The release handle is in a locked position our mounting platform here, the bolts are all present and tight to the platform and to the frame. It's not cracked or broken, no welds on it. If we look up in there, we'll see that our kingpin is straight down from the apron. It's not ripped or tearing away from the apron. Uh, and the locking jaws are locked around the kingpin. And if we come back here where uh, Caleb is sitting here, we can see that we have plenty of space between our mud flap and our landing gear to make turns so it won't catch on the landing gear. Got that? Yep. All right. Back to the trailer. Trailer. Okay, here at the front of the trailer, our header board, headache rack, what do you want to call it? Uh, you want to look at the rivets on the side of the trailer. Uh, make sure that none of the rivets are missing. Uh, the panels uh, are tight against each other. There's no bulges or punctures in the front or side of the trailer. Up here at the top corner, we have a clearance light. We're gonna go down the trailer, checking the DOT, DOT tape down the side of the trailer. Our landing gear, the feet are fully raised. The handle is in the cradle here. Uh, it's got welds and bolts in it. He'll make sure none of the welds are broken. None of the bolts are loose or missing and it's not bent or broken anywhere. All right. Where these four bolts are on the side of the trailer, if you reach under there, you'll feel there's a cross member there. Uh -huh. The cross member is what the floor is bolted to. You want to look down, make sure that none of the cross members are bent or broken because that would compromise the safety of the floor. We have a left turn signal, four way flasher and marker light. Still checking our DOT, even though this DOT tape is deteriorated, it still works as it's supposed to. 
Hey, back here on the suspension of the trailer, uh, like your airbags, your brake chambers, your shocks, all that's the same. There's differences back here is our airlines. The fittings are tied on both ends of our airlines. Uh, they're not cut or split or leaking any air, and they're not hanging below the axle, okay? All right. Like I said, basically, uh, lots of this stuff back here is the same. We have our frame. This is our frame our tandem frame and this is our uh, sliding frame right here we have four pins two on this side two on the other there's the release handle right there for our pins between the duels okay we pull that out the pins slide in and we can move our tandems back and forth you know make sure none of these welds are cracked or broken and uh that there's no weld welds on it that Ill are illegal we have a bud wheel system here this is two wheels butted together Okay, um, the tread depth on these tires is also 230 seconds. They're wearing evenly. So I won't get into a bunch of detail on this because it's the same as up front. The difference is the bud wheel system. There's two wheels butted together. You know, make sure there's no debris between the wheels. No, no rocks, no gravel, no asphalt, concrete. Right back here, uh, this suspension is a little different than, uh, than most uh, suspensions. We have a torque arm running from the bottom to that axle and from the bottom here to this axle. Torque arm has um, nuts and bolts. They are tight. And between inside there, uh, which you can't tell, but uh, there should be a rubber bushing area that's not missing or coming out. Okay. So we have a door tie back right here. We have our mud flap right here. Uh, it is mounted to the bracket with the bolts. Uh, the bolts are all present and tight. Uh, the mud flap is not ripped or torn or dragging the ground. ABS light and marker light. At the back of the trailer, we have our doors back here. So we have our hinges here. They are bolted to the doors. None of the bolts are loose or missing. The hinge pins are all in place. None of these hinges are broken or welded on or illegal welded. Like I said, hinge pins are in place. The door is latched at the top. And here at the bottom, the handle is in the cradle with the safety catch over top of it to keep from bouncing out. We have our clearance lights up at the top. We have DOT tape back here. We have our chains for our door tie backs here that are in place. We have DOT tape on our bumper. We have left and right turn signals, four-way flashers, marker lights, and brake lights in the back. Okay. We're going to come around here to this side and check a few items over here, like this marker light and our DOT tape. I'm going to come down to the side of the trailer. Still, you're checking for many punctures or bulges, any missing rivets. We have a right turn signal, four way flasher, and marker light right there. And up here at the corner, we also have another clearance light. Okay? That concludes the outside. Now I will do a complete end cap with you guys. So climb on in. I'm gonna make sure my seat belt is not cut. No frays in it, no wear, no, no. Make sure it latches properly and stays latched as it does. Okay, I have a 5BC Rated fire signature to my side here it is uh, in date and fully charged. I have three reflective triangles in the side box and I have spare fuses in the glove box. I'm going to do a safe start. Truck is in neutral, brakes are set, ABS lights come on and go off. So I can start my truck safely now. Okay, so my mirrors, they are clean, clear. Not cracked or broken, of course, and they are adjusted to me, the driver. My side glass is also clean, not cracked or broken. Windshields, not cracked or broken. No illegal stickers on my windshield. I have a city horn or air horn and city horn. My wiper blades are against the windshield. There's no pieces missing from the blades. The rubber is not cracked or dry rotted or hanging down. They function as they should. Washer fluid sprays on the windshield and the wipers wipe it cleanly. Okay. So I have my water temperature gauge 
temperature here. Normal operating temperature is around 180 to 200. Oil pressure, minimum of 30. My volts, around 14 in charging. Primary and secondary air gauges that both needles are in the same gauge, of course. Govern cutoff is between 120 and 140. Okay, I have heater defroster here. I want to make sure it blows at my windshield, which it is, and down at my feet, which it is. Okay, I have a left turn signal indicator. I have a right turn signal indicator. I have four flasher indicators. And I have a high beam headlight indicator here too. Now I'm going to do my brake test. I'm going to release my tractor brakes, pull against my trailer brakes, make sure they are holding properly. And they are holding properly. I'm going to reverse the process, pull against my tractor brakes, make sure they are holding properly, which they are. I'm going to release both of my brakes and I'm going to do a service brake test. I'll pull up five miles ahead, five miles an hour. Come to a nice, easy stop. Make sure that my truck did not pull to the left or to the right. Five miles an hour there. The truck did not pull to the left or to the right. back to the on position so my gauges will come up and work. Maybe that's like did come on and go off again. Then I press my uh, brake pedal down fully and when my needles uh, quit falling and stabilize I would ask the examiner to time you for one minute. I'll time myself and I'll show it to you. Pedals down fully. I'm waiting for my needles to stop falling. They have stabilized, so I'm going to start the timer now. I do not want to lose more than four psi in a minute. Slowly, 
and at 60 PSI or above, my warning light or buzzer will come on. Okay, the warning light and buzzer did come on before 60. So now I'm gonna to continue to pump my brakes down faster and between 20 and 40 PSI, both of my knobs are going to engage. Both of them did pop out eventually between 20 and 40, so we're good. That concludes the end cap and the pre-trip.